to order. We're going to start with the opening session prayer by Mike Hayes, <coughs> followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Jarman Hicks. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for everything you've given us. Lord, be with us tonight as we make the best decisions for our school system, our children, and our employees of this system, Father. Lord, be with us as we go our separate ways and keep us all safe tonight. Lord, be with those that are sick. Put your healing hand upon those, and you know who those are, Father. Lord, be with our soldiers that um, protect this great country overseas and here ashore, Father. For in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Everyone, thanks the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to move into approval of the minutes of the December 11, 2018 minutes. Do I have a motion? Motion by Ricky Dodson, seconded by Jarman Hicks. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, uh, Any opposed? <coughs> okay, we'll move to additions or deletions to the proposed agenda. We'll move on to the approval of the January 8, 2019 meeting agenda. Do I have a motion? Motion by Dolphus Dial, seconded by Mike Sullivan. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Okay, we'll move right into the executive action items. Approved bid of $118,581 dollars and 70 cents from Central Technologies for security cameras. This is not going to include A.H. Roberts. If I can get a motion on that. Motion, motion by Harold, Harold Miller. Second by Jarman Hicks. Any discussion? I got a question. Will A.H. be included in the future? Or? Yes, sir. Okay. Next year. <clears throat> this, is, this will be covered by that Grant, grant the safety grant okay. and of course part of that is recurring for the next well it'll be four years okay. after this one thank you okay any more discussion okay all in favor please say aye, aye. aye. any opposed okay we're going to move on to our consent Agenda items. First thing is a letter of resignation from Priscilla Morales. I'll let Dr. Winningham read that. This letter is written for the purpose of giving notice of my resignation as a foreign language and ESL teacher due to health reasons. My resignation will be effective on December 20th. It was not easy to come to this conclusion. I feel like I have grown as an individual and as a teacher. I hope you understand that as of right now, this is the best decision for me. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for your kindness and support. I feel that I am leaving with a remarkable amount of knowledge that I will take with me. I also want to thank you for the opportunity you've given me to be a part of this wonderful team. It was a blessing to have taught at this school. I will be bringing many fond memories of this experience and I am hoping for good things to come. I am hoping uh, you take this resignation with a good will it was issued please do not hesitate to contact me if you need uh, my help with making the transition as smooth as possible not only for my replacement but for the students as well thank you for your support and understanding i wish this school all the best yours sincere sincerely priscilla morales okay and with that we'll go ahead and group the allen's elementary boys and girls basketball to ut basketball game in knoxville tennessee on 2919. I'll get a motion for the consent agenda item. Um, uh, Hayes, <laughs> seconded by Dolphin Style. And all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, that brings us to our new business item, which is approved first reading of the following policy 4.602 class ranking. Do I have a motion for that? Motion by Diane Sadler, seconded by Ricky Dodson. Uh, any discussion? 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and then we'll go for the special recognition of the OCEA. There, I don't have much tonight. Uh, as I'm sure most of you are aware, today was the beginning of the 111th General Assembly. It, it began today. Uh, so OCEA and TEA look forward to working with school boards across Tennessee to fight on behalf of public schools. I think that we're going to have to mount up our armor this year and, and really stand up and defend some concepts. I think we're going to be under some challenge from some charter school and some vouchers and possibly some privatization issues that may come forward. So I, I know this is one, one time that we're all on the same team. So I look forward to watching that fight as I'm sure y'all do too. Thank you. Okay, the last thing is the director's report. Our, the following certified substitute teacher is recommended by myself, uh, James Kelly. Hired the following non-certified substitute teachers, um, Beth Ployer, Ashley Smith, Stephen Barlow, Pam Smith, Carla Gardner, Karen Walters, Bobby Gellentine, Hannah Johnson, Trista Farley, Denise Richmond, Mary Rourke, Donna Franklin, Mackenzie Purdue, Grace Weaver, and Jolene Johnson. And then there were two things on fundraiser report, one from Allen's uh, to sell uh, Santa pictures at Christmas program to raise funds for supplies, technology, and resources for students, and one from Livingston Academy to interact club sweatshirt sales to raise funds for club expenses. Okay, and before I take motions to adjourn this meeting, uh, Dr. Winningham has an uh, announcement that he wants to make that's from one of our students that feel that we should celebrate. Uh, yeah, every year we have students who are, are enrolled in dual credit classes and either through Ball State or the Technology Center or through statewide dual credit. And um, the statewide dual credit has been a challenge for every student to pass that exam at the end. But we had one this year that passed the world history exam. It's a ninth grade student uh, Cole Wilson and uh, last year no one in the state of Tennessee passed that exam so that's quite the accomplishment for that young man to pass that exam this year as a ninth grade student so that's something to celebrate so. okay I thought we should celebrate that so now with that being said we're going to go ahead and take a motion to adjourn the meeting by Mike Hayes, seconded by Jarman Hicks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And we'll, you all wanna move right into the work session? Sure, yes. Okay, well we'll go right down to these seats here and move right into the work session. Call this work session to order. The first thing we have on there is the LA Education and Training <coughs> Classes, Linda Hossel and Gary Ledbetter. If you all want to come up, uh, we just want to take this opportunity to uh, thank you for your support and, and to let you know a little bit about uh, the education and training career cluster at LA. It's one of the uh, fastest growing career clusters that we have. Um, I have with me some of the students today. Uh, I'd like for them to stand, okay? Alicia Bilbrey, Emily Matthews,
in Shelby Mountain. Uh, what is happening to the uh, to our classes that Mr. Levin and I are both really proud of uh, is that we will have our first five completers of all uh, four classes that they are supposed to take uh, at the end of this semester. Uh, my fourth block, which is the beginning uh, foundations class for this cluster, has a group of 19 uh, in that class. Uh, 20 is full, okay? So uh, the classes are set up uh, to inspire uh, future educators. So take a look at these three girls. Guys, you will see them again, I can promise you. Uh, they're some of the best that, that I feel like LA has to offer. Um, I'd like to ask the girls to tell the group what you planning on doing, what, what type of teaching are you looking for? Alicia, we'll start with you. What um, would you like to teach? I plan on teaching elementary education. So. Elementary ed. Okay. Excuse Emily? Me. Excuse me. Can you have them come a little closer? I can't hear them. Okay. Come on, Jerry. Okay. Tell them again. Tell me again. I plan on doing elementary education. Um, elementary special ed. Um, I'm thinking library. Okay. The classes are set up again to inspire future educators. Now, something that I'm also real proud of is to get to work uh, once again with Mr. Ledbetter. He adds lots of wisdom and lots of experience to the class. Uh, lots of laughter and that's what we're doing. These girls would probably argue that my expectations are a little high some days for them. Uh, we work hard, we laugh a lot, we, uh, we get things done. So thank you for your support. Uh, it's one of the Again, one of the career clusters that I really enjoy working with. Let me say this, long story short, Dr. Winningham and I have talked about this all last year and then this year, we're basically, and I'm saying we, Overton County in the Upper Cumberland, state of Tennessee, southeastern United States, maybe the entire state, Dr. Zagundi could probably attest to this, we're basically at a teaching candidate, the potential for crisis. He and I talked about it. And Dr. Winningham said, I remember years ago, and you all probably do too, if you've been on the board as long as some of you all have, the teaching applications being a stack that big. And Dr. Winningham said, no longer. So last year I worked with, through the Highland Initiative with the Overton uh, County students, Clay County, Jackson County students. And then at the spring of last year, summer of last year, they redistributed those funds and that was kind of uh, moved to a different place. Well, this year I was hired uh, in Overton County as ELA coach. So I'm working at the high school and with our, our uh, junior high uh, English, you know, the language departments. But I also find time, a little bit of time, to go down and work with these good people here. And let me just say it like this. I was at Rickman Elementary School last year walking down the hall. A lady down the hall yelled at me and said, Mr. Ledbetter, could I talk to you? And I said, yeah, I stopped. And she came up and she said, I want to thank you. And I said, for what? And she said, you're one of the first ones that have encouraged, that has encouraged my daughter, who's a senior at Livingston Academy last year. Her daughter's now an education student at Tennessee Tech. She said, you're one of the first ones that's encouraged my daughter to be a teacher. She said, that's all she's ever wanted to do. It's all she's ever talked about. She said, but this comes from grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, and her dad saying, you don't need to do that. You need to do something else. And she said, finally, we've got through Miss Hossel. And she said, I was working uh, with, like I said, the Highland Initiative last year in those three counties. She said, finally, someone is, someone is encouraging our students to go into education if that's what they want to do. So Dr. Winningham, I, we talked quite a bit about it last year. And then we got involved in uh, several things uh, through the Highlands Initiative just to try to mentor and to put the information out there that, and I call it the good, the bad, the ugly. Now, if we don't paint a rosy picture for them, do we? Yeah. Uh, we? We try to give them the truth, but to say it's one of the most rewarding jobs you could ever have, those educators will say that. But guess what? And as, a, as an instructor, and of course I worked, like I said, with Dr. Zagundi at Tech. As an instructor at Tech, one year I had a, a young lady, she was gonna be a sophomore that year, all 
she ever wanted to do was teach. And she, I was her advisor. And she was going to take my class her sophomore year. She came into my office and she said, could I talk to you? And she was crying. And I said, yes. And she said, I went home for the summer vacation and my dad told me, she lived in the Nashville area. She said, my dad told me that if I didn't change my major, he would no longer pay for my, agree to pay for my college education. She was devastated. She said, that's all I've ever wanted to do is teach. And I said, well, we have some restrictions about going out and talking to parents. I said, but, you know, let me know if I can help. So within a week or so, she came back, all smiles, and to my office, and I said, what's, what's going on? She said, I just finally told Dad, that's all I've ever wanted to do. If you want to help me to fund my education, fine. If you don't, I'll do it some other way. And she said, Dad finally said, okay, if it means that much to you, I'll help you. So I go back to say, give you those two examples to say, we've got students, and I have people in the public to say, now tell me about this TAPS 1, 2, and 3 program at Little Eastern Academy and their FOED class. And I try to explain to them, it's basically just mentoring students who want to be teachers and giving them the information that they want to try to encourage as opposed to discourage. Let them do some observations in, in local classrooms. Right. We took three, maybe about three different trips last semester to uh, our elementary schools. And I went to... Uh, Clay County about three weeks ago, uh, the lady that, that does the uh, similar program there, she asked me to come up and speak to her class, and I did, and her daughter and four or five others that I've worked with last year in Clay County, they're now in, in the local colleges uh, beginning their education program. But she said, I would love for you, this, this lady in Clay County, she said, you all need to let your board know how that you appreciate them and your, your superintendent, Dr. Winningham, for allowing this program to be in effect at Livingston Academy because the surrounding counties do not have that. They're trying to encourage, but they're running into the same obstacle that we have here in Overton County, which is fewer students are choosing the education path because they're being discouraged. So, and Dr. Winningham and I have talked, we're our own worst enemies. I, don't, I can truthfully say I don't think I've ever told one of them I wouldn't do that. But I, have I encouraged them like I should have? Probably not until I got into this. So I said even as principal at Livingston Academy, I, I tried to encourage, but I don't know if I did enough to encourage our students who wanted to be teachers to make sure that they knew they had some mentors, someone who would back them in a support system. And that's what you people are providing by providing the TAPS program at the high school. So we just kind of wanted to come and introduce these ladies and say thank you. And for the general public, who do, you know, the general public does not know as a group, you know, what we're doing there. Because they've said, now tell me about this education program at the high school. And I said, I'm the ELA coach, but I am finding some time to go down and work with these students. And these ladies and the other students are saying the same thing. They're saying, this is interesting. We want to do this. So we thank you for you know, allowing us to do this. And Dr. Winnie, thank you for your encouragement last year. We want to get out of the crisis stage if, if we're in one. Okay. And I can assure you, these ladies you. here are some of the we best. <laughs> we all have questions for us. We're willing to take your picture. All of us together. So if you're over on that wall or here in front of us, wherever, take, they want to take your picture and put it in the paper. Okay. I'd like to thank you all for showcasing the program and bringing these young ladies before us. I think we need to do more of that. Yeah. And, uh, well, I think if we don't, we're going to going to lose some, some good talent to other things when we could have some teachers. So. Yeah. Okay, Thank you. Can, 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 can I get them? <laughs> <laughs> okay, on three. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Well, we'll try it again. <laughs> One, two, three. There we go. Thank y'all for allowing us to come. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. students and, and 
those things are changing more now than they ever have probably in, in the past. And um, we reached out to a, uh, this is a nonprofit group uh, that has been working in Putnam County Schools and they'll give you more information I'm sure than, than I will. I don't want to steal any of their thunder, but uh, uh, they started 10 years ago, is that correct? And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Clinton Council and Lisa Zagumni to share information with you guys. We met informally the other day with a few, and, and so just come on and, and share your information and, and what you can share for our students at Overton County. Thank you. I don't know where to stand. I guess I'll go over here, too. Anywhere is okay. This is the workshop. This is the workshop. Well, thank you for uh, inviting us, to, uh, Dr. McMahon. Chair Abson, thank you and the board. Uh, we met with some of them uh, Friday briefly and uh, it's a good meeting. And so we just feel it an honor to come here and talk to you guys about the things that we're doing at Impact, uh, the things that we're doing in the Putnam County School System and see how we can be of service to you here in Overton County. Uh, I have a couple guests, uh, as you mentioned, Dr. Lisa Zagumi, who is the uh, Dean of the School of Education at TTU. She's also on our board of directors as the Vice Chair of Education. And I have what we call a homegirl here, uh, Dr. Karen Ramsey Idom, who um, is from Overton County, uh, who is an ambassador for Impact, and she leads out in our inclusion and unconscious bias workshop training. Um, and so um, she actually has a little time crunch here, so I'll kind of skip a little bit about, I'll abbreviate my remarks about Impact and just say that we are um, 10 years old this year. Uh, and our mantra is community building community. And we want to create environments where everyone thrives, all of our kids thrive, and they're culturally supported. Uh, if you look around Cookville, Upper Cumberland, it, it's changing, it's, it's growing uh, by leaps and bounds. We have uh, companies coming from all over the world coming in to, to our, our area. And uh, we have to set the tone, we have to prepare for that. And so uh, we've been doing some work with the public school system. Um, Putnam County uh, to help create an environment that is welcoming, culturally supportive. And part of that is professional development uh, with unconscious bias training. All of us have unconscious bias. You can't live in this country and not have some unconscious bias. And so part of this is recognizing that and having some cultural sensitivity uh, about that. And so I'm going to kind of turn it over to Karen so she can say her uh, part about that. Thank you. So um, thank you all. Um, and as Quentin did mention, I am a homegirl. Um, you might remember my dad, uh, Charles Castle Ramsey, and my mom, uh, George Ramsey. Um, and I thank you all for, for letting me participate and come here today um, to talk about this great organization, Impact Cookville, and some of the work that we've been doing specifically around unconscious bias and trying to um, help individuals raise their awareness. Um, if you have a brain, you have unconscious biases. And so the point of going through this training and, and really understanding what's going on, you can't stop that initial gut reaction, but you can stop that second thought. You can change. And you know when you think about um, the way the brain works, there are neural pathways that each time you do the same thing, that neural pathway gets deeper. And so if you can stop it, you can actually allow that neural pathway to heal up and you won't do that action again. And so we want people to feel like they belong and, and actually belong and be included and be able to not just survive going through school, but thrive as they're going through school and go on to be very successful. And so the workshop, we conducted a workshop back in November and had about 45 members of the community, um, a really great um, you know, cross section of all that you see and love about um, the Upper Cumberland area. And there was such great energy and passion about it that we want to, to really drive that forward. And so we're gonna be going forward this year and doing train the trainer and having facilitators who are comfortable then going out and doing more of this in schools, in local um, 
organizations across the community, nonprofits as well as businesses, and, and really trying, again, to make sure that our communities are welcoming and that anyone feels like this is home. That particular training was the morning of Tech's homecoming, just so you know. <laughs> it was really bright and early, and we didn't have a whole lot of leeway in getting word out about it. And like Karen said, we had about 50 people there, and we had tech faculty and staff, we had folks from Putnam County Schools, we had various community members, and the feedback was, we want more, we need more, please let us know when you do, you know, because sometimes people don't want to give you their email address, they're like, where do I sign up to get more information about this? Um, so it was really well received, and so we're gonna, like Karen said, do the train the trainer and roll out some more. But I am a part of IMPACT, but I'm the Dean of the College of Education at Tennessee Tech. I am all about some public schools and doing whatever we need to do to support our teachers and our staff and our administrators in our public schools. So I'm here to serve you all and I'm happy, excited, thrilled to be able to share what we've been doing in Putnam County. You know, Putnam County gets a little spoiled because that's right where tech sets. And while we try and reach out, you know, sometimes we get stuck. So I think this is a great opportunity for us to roll out some of the things that we've been doing with Putnam County um, up here, but also to help meet your needs. It's not cookie cutter. It's not, okay, we're doing this here, we're, so we're gonna do it up here too. We wanna know what you need from us so that we can provide those resources and those supports. So if that's you know, curriculum support, supplemental materials, something like that, if it's professional development, if it's speakers, if we want to roll out some particular events um, that we can help, that's what we want to do. So we're here to provide a resource to you all. Yes, and um, you know, part of this was actually having a conversation with Jay Boyd, who's also on our board. Um, the training for teachers just consisted mostly of poverty training, I think, and there was no diversity component to it. And uh, we really do ourselves a disservice if we don't uh, train our kids and our teachers to uh, live in a diverse world because this is a global world, it's a global economy. And if you don't prepare these kids to, to interact with people that don't look like them, don't sound like them, don't have the same background, uh, they're at a disadvantage. And so it really helps us all if, if we can kind of get in front of this and, and, and be uh, uh, proactive. a couple of resources um, just so y'all have something in your hand grab one and pass it down um, the first thing on there and these are not in a priority of importance it's just the way the paper clip worked with the little piece right there. <laughs> you have my business card on there so you have my contact information if you need to get a hold of me in addition to these two because um, we're all part of the same team um, the second piece of paper on there is a save the date card. There is a professional organization, the National Association for Multicultural Education. We happen to have a Tennessee chapter, and it's a really neat organization. And this summer, the Tennessee chapter is just, it's brand spanking new, they just organized. And we're having a conference at Tech in July. So spread the word if there are some folks that you think would be interested in coming to that, um, we can make that happen. Um, the third sheet on there is the um, graphic for the pipeline of progress for impact. And then the last sheet. Can I just say something about that real Please. quick? Pipeline to progress is our strategic vision for attracting, uh, developing, and retaining diverse talent. You know, if we, if we have these talented kids here, we don't want them to go somewhere else and leave, we want them to contribute back to our community. If we have talent coming in from outside of the state, we want that here in our community. So this is our strategic plan to be forward thinking and to think of ways that we can set the tone, create the environment where people want to stay uh, in this environment and contribute to our, our society here. And then the last sheet is there's another program through Impact Leadership oh, yes. with um, Cindy Schumann and she has like a five-prong program where they talk about everything from financial literacy to diversity to Myers-Briggs. Um, it's a whole package. 
So she wanted us to share um, what her program works on, and we have those five pieces broken out there, and she's happy to help and roll that program out up here too, again, based on what your needs are for your schools. I, I just wanna say I appreciate you coming. I'm excited to see what we can accomplish working together and uh, to help our students and help our faculty and help our community. Thank you so much. Thank I really you appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us. Okay. We've got um, one or two things that's not listed on here. The next thing, I'm going to turn it over to Mike Hayes to give an update on the building committee. Yeah, so yesterday uh, the building committee met at the uh, high school, and uh, the first thing we did was looked at the uh, football stadium that we've discussed. In the past, uh, the, Mr. Cheney was not able to be here. He had a kidney stone, and unfortunately was in the hospital, but a couple of the uh, architects and uh, engineers did come up and took some notes for him. So uh, got some more details of kind of things we're looking for and layout and things of that nature. Uh, I know Dr. Winningham's gonna get in touch with Mr. Cheney at the end of the week, first of next week, for him to come back in a couple weeks to sit down and meet with us. But uh, after that, we went inside the library and just took school by school and uh, went through our original list of things that we had for the building committee. Uh, several things that was taken off the list due to you know, projects getting done with this energy saving program. Uh, the ESSI that's uh, underway right now, so a lot of the bathroom remodels, all the schools are getting the new toilets uh, that are water efficient, new sinks that are water efficient, all the LED lighting uh, that's water efficient. If you hadn't had a chance to high school, go look at that gym, it's just amazing. Um, I think comments have already been made, hey, if you've redone your floor, you know, nothing's been done. It's just the lighting has brought that much in there. So um, that works underway and getting done too. But uh, our next step would be in a couple of weeks when uh, Mr. Cheney can meet back with us uh, is to sit down and go over some uh, dollar figures with him on uh, what he thinks that uh, it would cost us to do that and kind of meet as a group and throw out some other dollar figures. Then at that point, start tackling a game plan on how we address some of these issues. So. Uh, Pretty much it, just kind of recapping and you know narrowing the list down a little bit and a little bit more in depth and um, uh, going from there. So hopefully in a couple three weeks we can get back together with Mr. Cheney and have some more information. So. I actually spoke with him this afternoon. Oh, did you? Yeah, he was um, he was excited to talk to someone else. I think. I'm sure. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he was he was feeling much better. He's ready to go home. He didn't know if he was going to get to or not, but. Um, but we, we discussed those things, and I told him that uh, the two gentlemen that came had the list of information, and we'll start working on that in the morning. So, okay. If he gets to go home. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll, I'll just get back with you first of next week, see if I can get a date with him. Okay. Okay, and the last thing is we have a budget committee meeting immediately following this meeting, correct, John? Yes, it'll just be real quick, just 10 minutes if. Uh, the committee and uh, Dr. Winningham and if our budget director wishes to attend if he comes as well. Okay, with that being said, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and adjourn this work, adjourn this work session. And thank you all for coming and you all have a safe trip home.